Captain Joy 25 times around the Lucas Oil Speedway because, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you've been saving that lunch money for as your field works into three. Off of four, we're green. Slamming Sammy Swindell stands on the gas, gets the lead. Now the battle brewing for second. Take a look at Johnny Herrera right there in the midst of things, trying to go to the front of the field with three wide. Three wide for the runner of spot. Carney down to the bottom. Herrera going to slam the door on him as he drops to the inside line. But Jonathan Cornell is going to hold the position to the high side. Cornell in second. Herrera in third. Carney in fourth. Now the battle will be in the top five. The 21 of Brian Brown working top shelf in the 05 of Brad Loyette. He's got it. Here comes the Casey General store number 21. Machine is the pass for second. Now Herrera is going to take it away from Jonathan Cornell as they bolt to the back straightway. Three wide behind them. Brad Loyette in that 05 doing battle, Brian Brown in the 21, Loyette trying to come through the... As we're back underway. Swindell with the lead, but not by much. Herrera slips up a little bit, here comes Cornell. Boy, driver getting way up of the racetrack. He just about tagged the wall was the nine junior at Derek Hagar as we go back up to the front of the field. Cornell now under fire from the 11 exit. John Carney the second, but Swindell has got company. A pair of veterans at the front of the field. But the Swindell off of the bottom of turn number four and back underway. Into turns one and two. Swindell flies to the high side. Herrera will do the same. Now Cornell off of the bottom of the third position. Rolling down the back straightway, trying to close in on Herrera right now for second. Battle behind them, the 11X of John Carney, the second to the high side. Brian Brown looking down to his inside. It will be Herrera, excuse me, it will be Carney holding on to the position as we go back to Herrera right now as he's starting to close in on Sammy Swindell here on the restart. There's the battle for the lead right now. Herrera in that 45, trying all over the racetrack to close that gap. Swindell very strong on the top side of the racetrack. Jonathan Cornell coming into the mix as well. His 28 looking good early in this race. Jonathan Cornell has one career. Lucas Oil ASES National Tour feature win, and it came at this racetrack in the 2013 Speed Week. He rolls right around the bottom of the racetrack through turns one and two. Closes in on Herrera. Herrera now evacuates the top and goes down to the bottom through turns three and four. Gets the run of Swindell side by side off of turn number four. Your battle is for the lead into turns one and two. Herrera couldn't make it work right there. Patient he is off of turn number four. Trying to set up another run into the lead. Look at Swindell go back to the bottom of the racetrack to try to see if he can stay down the bottom and maybe cut off Herrera's run down on the bottom of the racetrack. You have to wonder if Herrera maybe showed his car just a little bit too soon and Swindell adjusting his line now going down to the bottom. But how long can the brakes last on the three machine? He has an inboard rotor absolutely aglow as he tries to run the bottom and again up the high side just about goes through the cushion. Here comes Herrera now. Swindell over the cushion but brings it back down in front of the 45X. Goes down to the bottom. Herrera's going to go to the high side. Battle for the top spot off the turn number four. It'll be Swindell. Wow, Swindell barely holding onto the race lead over Johnny Herrera. Swindell continues to keep that top spot, but under fire from Johnny Herrera. A mistake by Sammy Swindell allowed Herrera to close up, get alongside, and then look at how smooth slamming Sammy is. He's able to open up that lead by a couple of car leaks. Here comes Herrera again. Boy, Herrera closed in just a, in a massive rate there, but he had to back out of the throttle to keep from running over the back of Sammy Swindell. Swindell able to hold on to the race lead as now that's allowed Cornell into the mix. Jonathan Cornell down to the bottom side of turn 22. Herrera to the high side and all over your race leader. Herrera races into turn number three. Look at how he's using that cushion. Coming off the corner, trying to get the run. Can't get alongside of Sammy Swindell. But this is where Herrera is really good. He closes into the back bumper. Here comes Cornell for second. He takes over the second, second spot. Jonathan Cornell up into the runner rush spot. Now Johnny Herrera falls to third. He's going to have to fight back hard off the high side of turn number four. Cornell off that bottom nice and smooth as he sets sights on the three of Sammy Swindell. Swindell now off of the top and down to the bottom. Here comes Cornell. Here comes Herrera trying to fight back for the second spot. He will be denied, though, as they work into slower traffic, trying to get around the 34 of Cornell. Corey Nelson, Swindell slips up a little bit. Here comes Jonathan Cornell. They come off a of turn number four, 14 laps completed. Sammy Swindell picks up the pace. Jonathan Cornell giving chase now as both drivers working to turns one and two. Swindell up to the high side. Cornell down to the bottom. You'll have a new race leader down the back straightaway. Get the crazies riled up. Here comes Jonathan Cornell. Look at the run that Cornell gets off the bottom side of the racetrack. Other people watch and learn. Herrera contact. Contact right there with Carney on the front stretch. Be very important for him and his team as we get back underway. 
It is Swindell, your race leader. He will try that bottom line. Coronel will follow him in, but look to the high side, because here comes Johnny Herrera now. Johnny Herrera back up in a second. He'll try to set his sights on the three of Sammy Swindell. Swindell, despite very soft brace on that car, holds on to the race lead for the time being as he rolls the bottom side. Hollywood on the high side is making it work. To second he goes, trying to catch your leader, Sammy Swindell. Herrera has a rocket ship in that 45 coming down the front stretch. Johnny Herrera on the cushion, trying to get the run on Sammy Swindell. The brakes coming back a little bit for the driver out of Tennessee as he rockets down the back straightway, maintains about a five car length advantage over the 45X as they'll roll into turns three and four. Wendell off of the bottom, Herrera off of the high side. Just over a half a second separate those two drivers right now as they roll it turns one and two, and here comes Herrera again. Swindell able to get that momentum surprisingly on the bottom side of the track. Cornell now sliding back just a little bit. Look at Carney having gotten by for third. Now, Brad Loyette trying to get by the 28 as well. Off of turn number two, Cornell able to hold the position now, trying to stalk the 11 exit, John Carney the second, and reclaim the third spot. As your top two drivers have set sail on the rest of the field, that battle for third continues to be a good one as Cornell edging to the inside of the 11 exit as they worked into turns one and two, now has to really kind of lock the car up a little bit to try to hold that bottom side. That allows Carney to just bolt away from him down the back straightway as slower traffic cometh for your race leader as it'll be the high side where you find the 34 of Corey Nelson, Swindell tiptoeing down around the bottom and able to run away from him. Wayne Johnson in the two, battling with Brian Brown in the 21. Loyette slams the backstretch wall right there, battling with Cornell. That cushion exiting turn number two, getting very, very thin. A lot of drivers skipping up through that and tagging that wall. And Brian Loyette doing so as now. You'll see him actually roll his entry down just a little bit as he's nice and smooth down the back straightway. As we continue on into slower traffic, it is Sammy Swindell. Now he will fall the second. Johnny Herrera around the high side. Into the field. And oh, by the way, four laps to go. Sammy Swindell able to get the advantage, but instantaneously Herrera goes to the outside and Herrera is your leader. You saw where Swindell did not have the brakes to hold the bottom and Herrera able to take advantage of that as Swindell now sliding off of the bottom on exit as Swindell really having to get up on the car now. He goes to the high side, diamonds it down to the middle of the racetrack, but Herrera up to the race lead as the battle on the racetrack right now is going to be for the fourth position. The 20 to Jonathan Cornell trying to take it back for the 05 of Brad Loyette right around the bottom of the racetrack. He Once again for the final laps of this 25 lap A main for ASCS at Lucas Oil Speedway. Three laps remain as they roll into turns one and two. Herrera again visits the cushion. Swindell off of the bottom. He'll have Carney giving chase with Loyette and Cornell rounding out your top five. Your field filing into turns three and four. Up front, it will be Herrera coming to the spinning twin flags and two to go. Terry Maddox, the chief starter of the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour, will get the white flag ready this time as your leader rolls into turn three off of turn number four. One more trip around the Diamond and Dirt tracks. Johnny Herrera last visited victory lane here at Lucas Oil Speedway with the National Tour in 2013. He will roll down the back straightway for the final time here on night number one of the sixth running of the Hawk and McMillan Memorial. He'll be greeted by double checkered flags. Johnny Herrera wins at Lucas Oil Speedway. Sammy Swindell crossing at second. John Carney the second in third. Brad Loyette in fourth. And Jonathan Cornell unofficially completing your top five. Wayne. Out to Dave Argerbright. Before we do that, let's take a look at the top ten results here. Herrera's